Hello and welcome to the show. So this episode we have a challenge that was sent in to us by a viewer and that was to have a look for the best and worst value cars within Forza 4. Now this excludes the auction house because you can get all sorts of amazingly ridiculous deals on the auction house. This is just stuff you buy from the game normally. This also discludes the cars that are sort of like the free gifts. At number 5 of the worst value cars that we think is the Ferrari California. Now this may be a Ferrari but it's not worth the 220,000 credits that it's put up as. I mean, for 20k more, you can have a 4th of 8 Italia, which is faster, better handling, and better looking. It's still a good car, but just not good enough to be that price. At number 4, we have the Hummer H1. Now, this is a very, very big, very, very heavy car that doesn't really have a whole lot of use. It does cost 120,000 credits as well which is a phenomenally large amount for, well, an almost useless car. However, it isn't number one because we have found a couple of uses for it. We went racing with them a few episodes ago and that was a huge amount of fun, if not particularly sensible, as, yeah, it is basically chaos. It can also be used in car football with a bit of upgrading. It makes a very effective goalkeeper because of its ridiculous size and it's also very strong for kind of pushing everybody else out of the way. So it's not completely useless, but it is incredibly expensive for what it is. Now, as you all know, this is a Nissan Leaf, and in mine and Alex's opinion, one of the worst cars you can buy on this game. Also, it costs 30,000 credits, which, from what we can see, isn't really worth it at all. I wouldn't pay if it was 30 credits, let alone 30,000. It's slow, it rolls about. I don't know why they put it for 30,000 credits, but it does nothing. It, you can't race it. You can't do anything with it, to be fair. It's electric, so it's not fast. And I don't know, I don't know whether Forza put it in. I think it was a fill car, but it's not brilliant. At number two, we have the Bentley Continental Platinum Motorsports Edition. Now, this car costs 550,000 credits, which is in fact more than our entire best value list put together. It's incredibly expensive, especially when you consider that this is more expensive than both the Bentley Continental Supersport and the normal one, yet it's heavier than both of them. It has a little bit more power than both of them, but it's not as fast. And quite why you'd spend that much money on this, considering the only differences I can really see are slightly different wheels and a silly body kit. I'm not really sure why it costs so much. It's not a particularly good handling car either. It's not particularly amazing to drive. And at number one, we have the Aston Martin Signet. Um, as most of you may know, it's just basically a glorified Toyota IQ. Um, it's, as far as I can see, all they've done is just put an Aston Martin styled front. It looks like an Aston Martin that's just been squashed. It doesn't look right at all. Um, and it cost 45,000 credits. Now, I bought one of these sort of alternative cars. I'm going to try and do our typical entrance. And no, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't you can't work. can't handbrake can't turn an Igo. So this is a Toyota Igo. This is a sort of alternative to the Signet, similar kind of city car-y thing. The Igo costs 10,000 credits, I think. I should have run my research properly, but I think this is 10,000 credits. And now we've got two city cars. I think we should have a race. I'm going to try and have a race in these. This... Oh, God, this is slow off the line. <laughs> now, considering uh, the... Signet is a little bit more powerful, about 20 horsepower more powerful, but a little bit heavier. They're very, very evenly matched, actually. As we you're can pulling see away. I am actually, very, yeah, very so for your 35,000 more credits, you're going slower. I think yep. the Igo is also the better handling oh of the two God, cars. Oh my God, the body roll. As we witnessed. Oh, the understeer. <laughs> God knows where. Good grief. It, it is a horrible car, this. Now, for our best value cars, at number five, it is the Lotus Carlton. This is one of my all-time favourite cars, purely because it's my definition of a sleeper car. It looks like a normal Vauxhall Carlton with a little bit added on, but it's insanely fast. Top speed, 170. It was the fastest four-door saloon for a very, very long time. It basically shows that Lotus can make even the dullest of cars, which the Vauxhall Carlton was, into one of the most exciting it really is a phenomenal car, it's great fun to drive, and yeah, I want one. And it's only 19,000 credits, which is an incredible deal for such a, well, mental car. Up next we have the Lancia Delta. 
Now, this is one of the most successful rally cars ever made. Okay, admittedly, this is a road one, but all of its championships, or most of its championships, were uh, won consecutively, and the car all round is just amazing. The best thing about it, though, is it only cost 22,000 credits. Now, that is amazing for what, for what the car is. You compare that to other road legal rally cars, such as the Ford uh, RS, or the Lancia 037, or even the Lancia Stratos, it is incredibly cheap. At number three, we have the Radical SR8 RX. Now, yes, this car does cost 300,000 credits, and that is quite a lot. However, what you get is, well, mental. This is a mid R2 car, and as you'd expect, it's incredibly, incredibly fast, and it has so much downforce it will go around corners and kind of tear your face off. Around the Nurburgring, it set a lap time only a couple of seconds slower than million pound Zondas, and I think it might even be faster than a 599XX. And those cars cost million, 1.5 million, sort of ridiculous money. And this is 300,000, really not that much to ask for such an insane car. At number two, we have the Lotus 211. Now, this car costs 70,000 credits, and what you get is not a lot of comfort, not very much space for anybody to sit, really, but you do get an insanely quick car. This car beat Zondas, uh, it's beat Lamborghinis round, the, round our test track, and it's a mid-A-class car, which is just incredible. I mean, no other car in an A-class in a class has gone round the test track quicker, and for that, I think it's probably one of the best-valued cars ever, really, for 70,000 credits. You can't really... You can't really get faster for 70,000 credits, I think. And, and here comes of course, Alex and something. <laughs> I, this had to be number one. Everyone knows how much I love this car. It is, of course, the ACR Viper. Now, this is 100,000 credits, which is not a lot when you consider this car is third on our leaderboard. It is faster than a Lamborghini Aventador, faster than a Lamborghini Reventon, faster than Ferrari 458 and McLaren MP4 12C. This is a ridiculously fast car that doesn't cost a lot of money. I don't quite know how they've managed to, to make it so cheap and quite how it handles so well. It's based on what's essentially a modern American muscle car, but this is now really, in my opinion, the ultimate supercar. It's incredibly fast, sounds amazing, looks rather menacing. I'm not a huge fan of the sort of silly wing that goes on in the back, but it needs it for the aerodynamics. And it all works really, really well. It's a great handling car. So yeah, this has to be uh, our number one, because for 100,000 credits, you can't get a car that's faster. And that about wraps it up. That's our list of, uh, of our cars. I'm sure people will have different opinions, so don't shout at us too much. But <laughs> yeah, if you have challenges and stuff you'd like to see us do, then leave them in the comments as always we'll have a look through them and we will try and get onto them and i think we've got 400 subscribers now we hit that like a couple of we days have, ago yes we've hit that so nearly and we've nearly hit 100,000 yeah thank you we've nearly hit 100,000 views as well so we're getting some milestones i think out of the way <laughs> yeah we're getting there but yeah that's about it for this episode guys so thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye <laughs>